Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter Monday. It's still Easter, and it's a wonderful time. The day after Easter is also a wonderful feeling of, I don't want to say relief because it sounds like the travail, but it's good. It's good to be on the other end of it. So now we get to just enjoy it. Thanks be to God. Hey, as we do during Easter, we do the Regina Chaley. So let us pray. Regina Chaley, letare, alleluia. Quia quem eruisti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit sicutixit, alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, alleluia. Great, because the Regina Chaley replaces the Angelus and the, you know, if you're doing the Angelus at noon and things like that, it's this thing. Great. It's just a lovely, lovely time. Happy Easter. Well, we had a, it was a lot. It was a really wonderful time. And I'll talk more about that in my reflection. It is uh, not snowing today. In fact, it'll be a little bit warmer throughout the week. And we'll get back to snow on the weekend, though. <laughs> because, of course, it's just April. And it's still very much within the ski season around here, too. All right. As we do, let us dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who give constant increase to your church by new offspring, grant that your servants may hold fast in their lives to the sacrament they have received in faith. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are children of Israel, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God, with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet, and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set up one of his dependent descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did he see, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God, he poured forth the promise of the Holy Spirit that he received from the Father, as you both see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, Reconcile sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting. The shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen. Our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor king ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. 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 This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be joyous. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had happened. The chief priests assembled with the elders and took counsel, then they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him while we were asleep. And if this gets to the ears of the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. The soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has circulated among the Jews to the present day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are some verses earlier in the chapter 28 of Matthew that we just read that I think are also worthwhile. So I'm going to quickly just read them now because there's a little bit more context there about what's going on, especially like, for example, with the guards. What is that? All right. So this is the resurrection in Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. 
come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And then the gospel that we read starts. So that's why Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went away quickly from the place. They were fearful, yet overjoyed, and so on. So that little bit with the angel is uh, a lot of fun. It's also this, in the history of like drama in the West, one of these very early passion play bits that you'd get this dialogue, which is, do not be afraid. Jesus is risen. He is not here go to Galilee. <laughs> that that dialogue is a, is a really very important one, like I say, in the history of drama, because now we have in the gospel that this very interesting, dramatic emphasis that what you are looking for is not here. You are in the right place, but you have to now go to the other place, which is where it's all going to come to its wonderful conclusion. And then they see Jesus on the way, and they pay homage to his feet. Throughout the week, we're going to be hearing more of these resurrection stories. Like tomorrow, we will have Jesus the gardener. It's the way it is in the Gospel of John, where Mary Magdalene sees Jesus but doesn't recognize him because she thought he was the gardener. <laughs> That's recorded in the Gospel. Okay. That's interesting. Then on Wednesday, we're going to hear the Road to Emmaus story, which will continue on Thursday, but we don't have coffee on Thursday. The first part of the story is kind of the important part. The second part is when the disciples have already like figured it out, and then they go back, back to Jerusalem from Emmaus and report what they saw. The <clears throat> stories that we will say this week are the different facets, the different pictures of the resurrection. And with that in mind, there's a lot that we can say about this. Now, Kind of setting up the idea, especially for the road to Emmaus one, it's a very important moment for faith and works. Very clearly, like Jesus is explaining all the things to them, he's walking along with them, but they don't recognize him until the breaking of the bread. There we have the description of faith, but then it really comes together when something happens, specifically the breaking of the bread. Brilliant. Great thing. We'll talk more about that on Wednesday. But right now, though, I want to share with you an idea, which is let's think about how the resurrection is depicted in art. <laughs> okay, that may seem like a kind of a funny thing. There are lots of depictions of the road to Emmaus and the Emmaus moment. I mean, in, in classical art and, you know, fancy art and the art that you have in churches and museums and other places in the world and so on. There are really just kind of three different versions, though, of the resurrection itself. So Emmaus aside, I'm not an art historian by any means. But if you quickly look at the pictures of these things, there are really just three ways to do it. One is essentially Jesus standing over a box or outside of a box and the guards all splayed out on the ground like they're dead, like we heard at the beginning of Matthew, of 28, that we I just read for you as kind of this addendum and context for the gospel that we read today. That's kind of the primary one. Then there's a secondary one, which is Jesus and the girls. So Jesus and Mary Magdalene and the gardener, the gospel that we hear tomorrow, or Jesus and some women, like the gospel that we read today, where there is, you know, Jesus standing there and the women who are amazed. Then, kind of a third one is a variation on the first, or maybe it's just the first and a different way of looking at it, was, which is just simply like Jesus standing there and usually like with a white banner of some kind for the resurrection, he's just, ta-da, the resurrected Jesus. So he still has like the marks of the passion, but is now alive. So perhaps it's maybe just a focusing on that first idea of Jesus that way, standing above the box and then the others down below. But kind of three different ideas, three different emphases, that's it. 
that's pretty much all of it. So here are a bunch of those images. So I quickly went yesterday and just looked at, with a search engine on the internet for art, at the various images of the resurrection as they're depicted everywhere. I'm not gonna uh, kind of tell you, I'm not gonna tell you who did what, because frankly, it's a lot of details. It doesn't matter. We're not, we're not doing the art show, but enjoy this with me. And I think it's very enjoyable. Okay, here we have, as I said before, <laughs> it's usually Jesus standing above with the thing and some folk below. And here is one of those. And you can't really see it, but in the bottom there, like you can see the, the, the shine off of some armor. You have one of those guards standing watch, except now terrified and on the ground. And again, and again, and again, <laughs> and again. So it's, it's really is like the same thing. And even the stained glass, that's from Florence, by the way. And again, and so on. You get the idea. It's, it's like over and over again, like this is the composition. It has to be. This one has an angel, just for fun, because of course the angel is there, rolled back the stone. So which is why he's on the stone, kind of going the, the other direction. And again, with the same image, here we have the angel coming and doing the stone and not the resurrection per se, because Jesus is not appearing. In the 19th century, William Blake also had an empty tomb resurrection image, which is kind of odd. I'm not going to show it to you. But anyway, again, standing over a box, there are the folk below terrified. This one's a little bit different. This one is Tintoretto. So Jesus is standing over a box, and the people down below are a bunch of saints, like St. Augustine, St. Cecilia, so, so on and so forth. So, you know, just a happy resurrection picture. But then again, it's the same composition, you know, and Jesus stands there holding the, the banner. There we have the angels looking into the tomb, not seeing Jesus, they're not looking at him, but instead the angel is saying, go to Galilee, it's going to happen. Now, there's also another composition, which is very important, which is of the harrowing of hell. This is Jesus taking the patriarchs out of the tomb. Kind of, so essentially taking the patriarchs out of the, the place where they have been and leading them now to heaven. But still, it looks like the same thing in, in a way. Even though this is from the Eastern tradition, Jesus is standing over it and now it's not that the guards are down below but rather the saints the patriarch saints are being taken up but then back to the normal as it were it's an albert durer it's from a lovely book of hours actually um, this is this is a, a gradual so that's that earlier i said that the introit for easter day is a lot of fun i have risen i am still with you that's what the music is you know, it's like, that's, that's it. <laughs> anyway, so more illuminations and the same idea. It continues and so on. Here's one for the road to the maze. Very, very different, startlingly different. This is Rembrandt, by the way. And we'll talk more about Emmaus later, but it's a, it's a very different kind of feel to it than... <laughs> Jesus jumping up into the air, essentially, like this. They're, they're all very much like this. This is obviously El Greco and the same. But here we have Jesus and, and the lady. And this is also particularly tomorrow's gospel. Don't touch me yet. Noli me tangere. This is from the Scriveni Chapel in Padua. Here's another one of the same Noli me tangere, but Jesus is touching mary's head but it's fun because he looks like the gardener he has a shovel <laughs> that's usually how the and jesus looked like a gardener thing is depicted because he has like garden implements you know there he is over and over again now just here we have the angel and like we've moved on to the, like the next stage of this but still there he is again emmaus this is caravaggio but, you know, you get the idea over and over and over again. Noli Matangere, 
here he is as the gardener because he has a hoe but this one is interesting because like his his brow has the blood from the crown of thorns on it it's very fun very interesting so this is what i was thinking about yesterday this is donatello this is a bronze this is a pulpit in florence but jesus over a box and the guards below here is Jesus just by himself with the flag, the resurrection. And he has like one foot on the side of the box, you know, and going up into the air, the guards below, the guards below. So as you can see, the resurrection is depicted in, there he is, Jesus, there he is, the white flag over and over and over again. Here we have Jesus alone and a guy who's reading. I don't know who. Over and over and over again. I hope you didn't mind that too much as quick, you know, go through a bunch of pieces of art. It's an interesting thing. And for that, I want to, on this Easter of Monday, transition to a slightly different theme, how to celebrate. This weekend was a wonderful weekend for the church. From Thursday to the end of the day yesterday, we had many liturgies and about 4,500 people that we counted, plus a number of other people coming in at different times to go and pray. Yesterday was simply bananas around here in terms of people coming to church. It was a, a glorious and wonderful thing, and thanks be to God. And it was a day of great celebration. Today, the church is going to be pretty quiet. <laughs> We're not going to have the same foot traffic. But today is still Easter day. Today is still, it will be all week, day after day, Easter. The same Easter day we celebrate this octave. And on this Easter Monday, what I want to do is encourage the continued celebration. Now, during Lent, we, of course, have our Lenten practices of fasting, almsgiving, prayer. That's great. Well, in Easter time, we move away from the fasting, obviously, but go to the celebration. And so I encourage everyone, especially in this Easter week, to celebrate well, to actually enjoy it, because we should. It is worth celebrating and continuing the celebration. The pictures I just showed you, really, it's just for fun, just as a, a little excursus. But all of those are things that we're going to read this week. Yes, we got today Jesus and the guards and that moment, and then the women, and then, and then. But as we go through this Easter mystery, especially this week, especially in this octave, it is worthwhile to celebrate it well and actually have fun. Yeah, I'm wishing everyone a fun week. Celebrate Easter. Thanks be to God. All right, as we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar, and for all bishops, that their obedience to the will of the Lord inflame and inspire us to strive for holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may increase in love of and respect for the Holy Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may enjoy perfect happiness and fulfillment in eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the doubtful, that the light and love of Christ may guide them to faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for whom and what else shall we pray? Through the intercession of St. Monica, for our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Happy Easter Monday. Enjoy it. Enjoy this whole and wonderful week. All right. God bless you all. We'll see you again tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye.